Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to dispel two myths about the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. Now that about 50% of the U.S. adult population has received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccines, it's now the medical community's responsibility to alleviate concerns about the vaccine and encourage the remaining 50% to get the COVID vaccine. There have been a lot of myths and misinformation about the mRNA vaccines, but here are the top two that I think are worth dispelling today. Myth number one, the vaccine alters your genetic system and the COVID-19 vaccines are part of a global effort to change the human genome and control the population. I just don't think people realize that the technology that's being used in the vaccine is currently being used by viruses already. This technology was not made up. Scientists are simply mimicking what is done in nature to our benefit instead of our harm. I want to stress that the way we get sick with an RNA virus is because the virus enters our cell cytoplasm and takes over. The messenger RNA gets inside the cell where then it produces proteins through translation by ribosomes in order to produce more virus particles that are either exported outside the cell, placed onto the cell membrane, or causes the cell to explode, releasing the virus into the bloodstream. This process repeats itself over and over again. That's why we talk about a viral load or the amount of virus that you currently carry inside your body. When the viral load is high enough, this is when you get sick with something like COVID-19. And this is when the tests become positive for infection. Did you know that our bodies are constantly fighting off viruses that it's exposed to all day long? And only when the viruses overwhelm the immune system do we get the symptoms of the viral illness. I think people hear words like taking over the cell along with the vaccine and people think that this is new technology that humans have made up. But this design has been around since the beginning of time. This is how viruses infect us. The scientists are just using this method for good instead of harm. The way the messenger RNA vaccines work is that instead of putting messenger RNA into the cell that causes illness, the messenger RNA tells the ribosomes to produce proteins that look enough like the spike proteins on the SARS-CoV-2 viruses to produce antibodies. And these antibodies are what will protect you from getting seriously ill from the SARS-CoV-2 virus the next time your body's attacked. The next time this SARS-CoV-2 virus tries to invade your cells and cause it pr to produce more SARS-CoV-2 viruses, the antibodies available in your system will be there to stop it early before a large viral load and serious illness can occur. The messenger RNA from the vaccine never enters the nucleus, so there's no chance of it interacting with genetic material. For those of you that are afraid of having interference with our DNA, you should be more fearful of some viruses that do enter our nucleus. And in some cases, the viral DNA has been found in the host genome. This genome alteration is not happening with the vaccines, but it is happening already with some viruses. Did you know that nearly 10% of the human genome is made of bits of viral DNA? Yes, you heard that right. The human genome has bits of viral DNA. These are called endogenous retroviruses. And for the most part, this viral DNA is not harmful. But in some cases, scientists are finding it actually has a beneficial impact. But also in some cases, it may be the cause of cancers. So for all of you afraid of having our human genome altered by a virus, it's already happening. But what is not happening is having our genome altered by the messenger RNA vaccines because it never goes inside the cell nucleus. I want to restate a wonderful summary of the messenger RNA vaccines from Dr. Tom Frieden that explains the way these vaccines work. A messenger RNA vaccine doesn't actually contain the virus itself. Think of it as an email sent to your immune system that shows what the virus looks like, instructions to kill it, and then like a Snapchat message disappears. At the end of the day, some of the best explanations for how the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines work is on medcram.com. Go to updates 116 and 117 to see a clear explanation with drawings. It's excellent and it's free. Okay, 
Now on to myth number two, that the messenger RNA vaccines cause infertility. Remember how I said that up to 10% of the human genome is made of bits of viral DNA? Well, one happy side effect of this is that there's production of a placental protein called syncytin-1. The body has repurposed the virus's cell-fusing ability to help the placenta fuse with the uterus. How amazing is that? Well, one scientist has suggested that this protein was similar to the spike protein found on the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And if the vaccine caused our bodies to make antibodies to protect us from COVID-19, he thought they could also make antibodies to reject the placenta. But let's break this apart a bit because myths that gain traction always have a hint of truth to them. Syncytin-1 is a viral fusion protein and the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein is also a viral fusion protein. But that's it. That's where the similarities end. They are completely different shapes. They are completely different viruses. Syncytin-1 is an endogenous retroviral fusion protein, and it's less than half the size of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. The spike protein is a coronavirus fusion protein. They belong to completely different virus groups. They are not similar enough that our bodies would be tricked into destroying syncytin. The body's immune system will only recognize the exact thing that it has been previously shown to target. It's like a key fitting into a lock. And of course, now we have data to show that plenty of women have conceived after receiving the messenger RNA vaccines. I want to thank Dr. Kenneth Whitwer for a wonderful explanation on the differences between these two proteins. I'll put the link to his YouTube video in the description below. At the end of the day, I want to caution each of you to what you're reading and believing from the internet. Know that the myths that you hear may have small kernels of truth in them, but consider the sources of the information and whether they're benefiting financially from their claims. Look at any other connections that they may have to organizations that do not align with your beliefs. Well, why should you believe me? <laughs> I'm a board certified United States trained medical physician that practices internal medicine. I have no connection to any governmental agency or pharmaceutical company. I have no financial ties to any organizations. Please consider getting your COVID vaccine. They're safe, effective, and readily available. Thanks for joining me.